All right, so in this lecture, uh, I'm going to cover how you go about adding uh, details to a car. Um, in this case, I'm going to address how to go about creating uh, the door handle that goes uh, right here in a car. And by looking at my reference, uh, the interesting thing about this handle is that it actually it, it it's kind of it kind of follows the same shape as uh, or the same the same curvature as the door. All right, <coughs> so it makes sense for me to kind of go in here and rather than uh, using a messy technique like booleans or something like that to actually kind of you know create that piece out of the actual. Um, geometry that's already on the door okay <clears throat> but I'm actually gonna have to go in there and kind of draw this in as well um, rather than again rather than having to use another piece of geometry to just kind of subtract that so I'm gonna start by going into my site over here <coughs> wireframe <coughs> and, and again you can see that uh, by the way that I constructed my topology I already have some curvature that's kind of already going to aid me towards trying to accomplish this piece okay <coughs> and again that was kind of like um, initially kind of thought out so this was kind of already part of the plan uh, so I'm going to go in here and I I'm actually going to draw in what this shape is right here and so I'm going to go to mesh um, I'm going to use the let's see Split polygon tool, which again I have in my shelf right here as well. Um, and I want to start cutting in this detail right here. And again, it might take me a couple of tries to make sure that it actually does what it's supposed to do. So again, it seems like it's not like it's not like in snapping here but it, it, that's fine Let's try one more time Again, I'm using G to just kind of go. Uh, I'm pressing Enter as I go here because again, it's kind of snapping to areas that I don't want to cut. So I want to make sure that I make cuts and they actually stay in place. So, uh, for instance, here making a cut here, pressing Enter and pressing G to just kind of go back to my last tool used. And again, I just kind of want to snap some of this detail right here. And you know, if I'm not happy with what it's doing, I can always do it. Alright, so something along the lines of this. And let's just snap right here. Alright. And again, I'm going to have some issues here because there's a little, you know, I have curvature here that even if I apply it smooth right now, it's not going to be able to create. So I still need to go in there and fix that up. So again, I'm using my split polygon tool and snapping a little bit more geometry in there, so I can actually move that geometry around and make it do what I want it to do. And then, again, I need to move this geometry around, and I could I could use my move tool, uh, but this could potentially maybe uh, deform my geometry in a way that I don't want it to. So I want to make sure that if I am going to be moving my vertices, at the very least, uh, I'm going to be using uh, my move settings under normal, okay? Because that way it's, it's moving along the normal of the geometry, not necessarily uh, uh, based on either the object or the, or the world. It, you know, it's not perfect, but it's going to give you better results than what um, 
just your uh, regular settings on, on, on the move tool wood. And I want to just kind of smooth it out to see what it's doing. So, you know, I am getting some some kind of sharp corners here. But I'm just going to see if, uh, again, maybe moving my geometry a little bit around while I'm in the smooth mode to maybe fix that up a little bit. And again, it's not going to be perfect. Just stick to something along the lines of this. All right. And again, that kind of completed the format. I probably don't want to stick to that because again, um, one of the other things that I'm going to do, I'm actually going to detach this geometry right here. So you want to keep in mind the fact that once once you do that, again, that's going to fundamentally change how this geometry is going to behave. Um, so <clears throat> again, I already have the the shape of my handle there gonna go back to this and again I can see that even moving stuff around along my normals kind of change that a little bit so I want to adjust it before I make any further changes all right and then I want to go ahead uh, again, I want to make sure that I have nice flowing geometry here. That's very important. And again, notice that everything that I have here is still a four-sided polygons. And, you know, if I wanted to go in here and add edge loops and things like that, I can still could. So that's very important. <coughs> All right. So now I want to go in here and I want to extract this uh, geometry from here. Because, so again, I'm going to be using this as my basis for that door handle. Then I want to go to mesh, and I want to extract this. Uh, again, keep in mind that this is a change that uh, you know you're going to be able to undo here, but it's fundamentally changing what you originally had there in your geometry. So I would definitely advise for uh, again every time that you do uh, uh, something that's changing fundamentally what you originally did there to just do um, a separate save for this. Again, I'm just going to override something that I, some test that I'm doing. <coughs> and then I want to come here, again, I selected these polygons that I want to extract. Just go ahead and extract them. All right. So now, uh, these are two separate pieces of geometry that used to be one. And uh, another thing to keep in mind is that they share the same pivot and, and uh, not, uh, one thing that you want to keep in mind again is your move settings I changed mine to normal so I could move my uh, vertices along the normal of my geometry but notice that now my pivots are kind of not there for me to move my geometry if I need to so just make sure that you need to kind of switch this around to object or world to be able to manipulate it in the viewport if you keep it under normal you're not going to be able to do anything to it um, and another thing to keep in mind is that this piece of geometry is actually sharing the same pivot point as the original geometry. So when it comes time for me to mirror it, you know, it's going to make things easy for me because it's already at zero over here. All right. So now I want to see what, what this change made to my geometry. And again, I'm doing a three here. See, actually nice smooth geometry there. And it, it somewhat smooth some of this stuff out. All right. And again, I want to see maybe my wireframe to see what it's doing. Okay. So I mean, it's just essentially doing what this is doing. Probably needs to be a little bit more curved al along these areas. Okay. But I can fix that. Um, but now I want to go in there, maybe I start adding some of this kind of details that I have going on here. All right. <coughs> and again, uh, for this to work, this is gonna uh, uh, this is gonna have to be separate pieces. All right. 
so uh, again another thing to keep in mind is that not everything needs to be one piece you can separate things into separate pieces and add the geometry that those little pieces need to do what they're supposed to do so that's exactly what we're going to be doing here I want to separate these two because I'm going to need to add extra geometry here at the bottom to for it to do this indentation right here so I'm going to select the geometry okay and we're also going to extract this okay and again I probably want to go into my side viewport and maybe move my geometry around a little bit and again I probably want to change this into my normal alright and again essentially this piece of geometry is not really doing what it's supposed to do so we're gonna have to maybe add a little bit more resolution in here to add the curvature that it needs alright uh, and again I want to see what this shape over here is doing alright but again no, the nice thing is that our edges are matching and you know it looks like it, it's a piece that's gonna fit correctly but I'm gonna have to add a little bit more resolution in here so I can get some of these nice curvature that you know it needs to fit right there and you know it's, it's pretty close at this point um, alright so le again let's go in here and add a little bit of extra resolution so we can add more detail to this piece. I'm gonna use the uh, insert edge loop tool here okay and an extra point here is going to allow me to uh, maybe add a little bit more curvature here okay another thing that I need to keep in mind uh, again I have my image points here <coughs> I need to create this is the indentation that I need to create so maybe the geometry that I'm going to add I just need to make sure that it actually kind of matches what 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 I needed to do right here alright so maybe this line I want it to go right here so again it's just kind of following what our image planes are showing us um, alright and I want to add maybe another piece right here so I can do that and this one right here I could either create another one here or maybe move this geometry here um, I'm gonna I'm gonna create a new loop right here but I might maybe change my mind on it later um, again some of this stuff sometimes can be kind of trial and error if it doesn't work just don't fall in love with the idea and start over alright but again we have enough resolution here that we can actually go in here maybe move some of these points around and make it fit the way we need to And again, I'm probably going to have to add another edge loop here so I can actually close this um, hole right here. Move this out. Alright, so by adding extra geometry now we have a much better fit for this piece right here. Probably going to have to add another edge loop here. and this one seems to be working fine alright so now again let's just look at our image plane see where the detail that uh, starts right here and it goes all the way around so I'm actually gonna select this edge right here and I'm gonna move it I'm gonna slide it and again I wanna be using my slide edge tool cause it's gonna move it along this, the, the normal <coughs> and that way it's not gonna deform my um, geometry too much um, but again, I want to be careful here because I think, let's see. Alright, so I think, again, rather than maybe uh, create another line right here, I think I'm just going to stick to what I had there originally. So again, this was a choice that I wasn't sure whether or not I was going to keep, so I kind of decided against it at this point. I'm actually going to, again, 
to select this edge right here and use my uh, slide edge tool slide it where I need it to go somewhere around here okay and I probably want to go ahead and add another line right here so I have a nice uh, you know so I can actually close some of this stuff over here so it's probably a better solution than what I had there originally and it's already normal so I can just kind of bring this down a bit okay alright so and it looks like we have now the geometry we need for this and again it's not going to be perfect but I'm, I'm going to stick to this and just maybe some, uh, move my geometry around as I need um, after I create the indentation so I'm gonna go ahead and select these polygons right here alright I'm gonna extrude them in alright and again notice that I'm kinda doing all these changes I have as I have my um, smooth preview on and that's because I want to I want to see what those changes are doing to my geometry okay because you know if we're in this mode we're not really seeing what it's going to do when it subdivides which is a mistake um, again <coughs> you want to learn to be kind of working in this uh, in this preview mode so you understand what the, the changes that you're making your to your geometry are eventually doing to the final um, model that you're creating Alright, so again, notice that, uh, again, you create an indentation here, um, and it has some interesting curvature right here, not necessarily uh, where we need this to be at this point, <coughs> but, um, let's see, it has some nice kind of flowing curvature and just kind of goes in like this. Uh, but notice that it's really sharp at this edge. So again, that's something that I'm going to have to kind of uh, have to add resolution here to be able to create that. And again, in order to create um, sharp edges, uh, what I have to do is go in there and add more resolution close to this edge right here. So I'm going to uh, use my insert edge loop tool. And again, I'm getting a preview of what this is kind of doing as I'm doing it all right so I'm getting I'm getting uh, some nice sharpness right here but it needs to be kind of more straight here at the edges <coughs> uh, there's a couple ways that I can go about fixing this um, let's see let's just go back to this one thing that I can do <coughs> is actually get rid of this geometry right here because again this is supposed to be a handle so the person is kind of supposed to stick their hand in it's supposed to be a hole in, in there and if I get rid of this geometry it's going to fix some of this kind of curvature that I got going on here it might it might not but let's I'm assuming it will all right so by just deleting those edges that I don't need notice that it's already kind of doing the type of curvature that I need to do that all right same here all right so this this seems like a pretty good solution for me to maybe just kind of leave it like that I could again if I want to maybe fill in this geometry right here I could definitely go in there and kind of straight it up a little bit more maybe move up my geometry uh, and stuff like that um, I could also give this piece a little bit of depth <coughs> again because right now it's kind of a little bit flat um, but essentially this this has the shape that um, that my reference is showing which again it's, it's just like a little bit of sharpness here um, and then a really smooth indentation and again I can I can go in here maybe move my geometry a little bit around to so it looks a little bit more like what my reference is uh, showing and again <coughs> I'm not going to be able to move these edges around if I keep this in normal I need to make sure that I change it back to world or I can use the uh, um, 
slide edge tool but again for this for the purposes of this I, I don't need to kind of slide it against the edge I kind of need to move it up so I can kind of keep some of this curvature so this works really well right here all right and I, one of the issues that we're having right now is that my computer just froze all right thank you and again I want to do save at this point just in case my computer crashes because it probably will <coughs> and notice that when we kind of zoom out from this it, it we can't really tell that there's anything right there I mean we know that you that the cuts that we, we did are there but we can't really tell what's going on and the reason is because we haven't given given it any sort of depth everything's just kind of the geometry is really matching really well here um, so it just looks like it's still one piece so we need to give it a little bit of depth so we can actually bring in some uh, a little bit more definition um, to this piece um, and again by doing that it's going to kind of take care of some of these kind of whole spaces that we have here and we have to do it in both places um, both in the door I have to give it a little bit of depth on that uh, depth on that hole that we created and we have to give the pieces that we extracted extracted a little bit of depth as well so <coughs> um, again rather than um, uh, extruding maybe a hole uh, again uh, for to give the, the the size of this door uh, depth rather than extruding all the faces I just extrude the edges down I want to pretty much do the same thing with this okay alright and again my file is kind of slowing down a little bit now so I'm gonna do a save and just kind of maybe start it again so I'm gonna post this for a second Alright, so I restarted my Maya, so it's not slowing down anymore. And uh, again, now I want to start maybe adding a little bit of depth to these uh, pieces of detail, so you, we can actually tell that they're, uh, you know, not part of the door anymore. So I want to go to the door and actually select the edges from the uh, um, uh, geometry we extracted, and I want to go in there and extrude that in a little bit. But again. Keep in mind that any change that you make like this is going to add some, uh, it's going to change fundamentally what's happening there. <coughs> and Maya is going to kind of try to interpret, you know, the changes that you're making. So by extruding this in and not having enough geometry to tell Maya that this is supposed to be sharp, it's going to create this kind of weird indentation that we have here. So we got to go in here and we got to add more resolution so it keeps the shape that we need. All right, and again, notice that if I gotta be careful with this because I have some kind of collapse in geometry in here. I'm just gonna fix this up a bit. Um, just gonna stick to moving this around. Alright, and, and this stuff inside doesn't have to look super pretty. Again, this is not something that's going to be in camera view, but at least you want to keep it flowing, uh, the geometry flowing so you can go in there and add more detail if you need to. Again, like in this case, we just added an extrusion and it's kind of creating a weird curvature here. So it means that it needs more resolution in there to keep some of that sharpness. So I'm going to go in here, edge loop tool. And I'm going to add a loop that goes around here, all right? And again, notice that by adding depth to this hole right here, we can already tell that there's detail there that wasn't there before. Uh, and again, I want to do the same thing with uh, this pieces. Uh, and again, this one is a little bit irregular, so I have to be careful how I extrude this uh, stuff out. Um, I'm going to start by adding details, I mean to add depth just to this edge right here, not everything. Um, so 
so I want to make sure that I deselect everything else And again, uh, adding an extrusion or depth to this is going to fundamentally change what's happening here. So we need to add more resolution for it to sustain the sharpness that we had there originally. So, um, alright. And again, this geometry collapsing in here, not a big deal because it's not something that's being viewed by the camera. But you can definitely go in there and clean that up if you if you wish to. And again, uh, again, I'm going to go in here and just add another extra edge loop here so we can keep the detail. Alright, so that's looking really nice. And same thing with this one. Alright, and that way we're kind of addressing whatever hole we had here at the bottom of our geometry. And again, we need to have more resolution here so we can kind of keep some of that sharpness. Alright. And now we have a door handle for our car. <coughs> that was made uh, from what the or original geometry that we had here. And again, it, it, it's really cool because, you know, it's actually following the, this ni nice sharp edge that I had going on the side of the car. So it, it's just kind of, it really flows really nicely. Um, the next thing that I like to address <coughs> is, uh, again, how to start. Once you get to a point where you have enough detail in your car and... Um, then you need to start kind of mirroring things because again we're only working on half of the car so then we can just kind of mirror the the other piece of geometry because basically you know it's a symmetrical object so <coughs> mirroring something like this is kind of very straightforward uh, again um, I need to make sure that I change my move settings all right and because all of these stuff was started from splines, uh, you know, and you were kind of drawing things out from the uh, orthographic viewport. Everything that you created is already at this point. All the axes are at zero. So, <coughs> in order to mirror this, uh, I need to do a couple of things just to make sure that it mirrors correctly. Because even though, even though our uh, um, pivot point is already at zero, zero, zero. We need to make sure that our uh, our vertices are kind of in the correct position as well. Um, and again, because we created everything at zero, 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 all of all of the geometry that I have here should be kind of aligned to this axis. But during the transition between uh, surfaces to polygons, some things might have changed. So again, I need to kind of go in there and maybe revise some of this stuff a bit. And I'm at the bottom here, so I need to make sure. Okay. Stick to this. Alright. So, uh, uh, you know, look. Uh, first look at this, it actually doesn't look that bad. Alright? <coughs> so, you know, we can assume that all of these vertices are already in the, in the right position. And again, to mirror this, all I have to do is go to Mesh, go to Mirror Geometry, and I want to look at my options. Because again, this kind of all depends on uh, on the location of our axis. <coughs> so again, we want to make sure that we're mirroring on the right and the correct axis. So uh, again, to check this, uh, I mean, I know already that it needs to mirror on the x-axis because this is, you know, my my right axis. I know it's the x one. Uh, and you know if I move it I know that it's translating on my X okay 
uh, and I also know that it needs to go in the negative because if I move my object on this direction you know it's moving in a positive direction all right another thing that you want to make sure of at this point and um, before you do any you know before you mirror this uh, <coughs> make sure that you've uh, gone into modify and you freeze transform your object so everything in your channel box is pretty much at zeros okay <coughs> you also want to go into uh, your delete by type and make sure that the history is deleted okay because <coughs> you don't need you know if this is ready to be mirrored that means that there is no extra uh, modifications that you need to this model it's just ready to be mirrored um, so again I have a couple of things going on here I don't need all this stuff uh, so I just want to make sure that I don't have I don't need that information so I'm just gonna get rid of it so I'm here uh, so uh, on my mirror direction again I already established that it needs to mirror on my negative x axis okay and I want to make sure that it's uh, merged with my original and it's merged it, the, the vertices <coughs> so then I just want to go ahead and click on apply all right and again notice that first it's not and I'm gonna hide my my planes here because they're in the way um, you know for the most part I did a pretty good job at mirroring this but I'm having an issue right here okay <coughs> and uh, I could you know, now that it's one object I could go into it and kind of fix the geometry myself but again that could be somewhat of a painful process and it could potentially change the shape that you that uh, of your object so uh, you know if you don't have to touch it it's better if you don't so make sure you go into uh, your channel box and go into the mirror that you just applied okay and again this pretty much tells you uh, what it's doing which is you know it mirrored on the negative x-axis and it actually merged your vertices uh, but we want to play around with the merge threshold because that's that's what's doing this and it just means that you know it might be a little bit too much so I want to go in here and maybe change this to a 0.5 alright and again notice that uh, you know that was a little bit too much so I want to increase that a bit and if I go to 8 you know still 0 0.08 it hasn't done anything let's do 7 alright <coughs> So I could I could keep playing around with this, but it's not going to give me the right solution that I want. So it makes sense that rather than me playing around with the settings, I understand that there is a problem there that it's in the original piece of geometry and that needs to be addressed before I mirror this piece of geometry. Okay. Um, so we know that there's something along this that's not working properly that needs to be uh, aligned before we mirror it for this to work right. And again, I want to hide this. So I'm going to go into my top viewport. Okay. And again, for the most part, everything's kind of already somewhat aligned to that, um, to my grid here. <coughs> um, but it's not perfect. You know, the fact that it's not aligned here to my grid um, at zero, this is what could be causing the fact that this part is not cl is not closing pro uh, properly so I want to make sure that all these vertices are aligned this grid right here this that, that zero line that uh, that we need kind of everything after to work correctly so um, I'm gonna be using my move tool alright I'm just selecting this I'm in my orthographic top viewport you don't want to do this in a perspective <coughs> it's not gonna work and you want to make sure that you're snapping your movements to the grid okay so uh, basically I'm gonna select these and just kind of move them now and again notice that it's just kind of snapping everything to that line um, you know you could try and kind of select in everything and try and see if it actually does it but sometimes that gives you really weird results it makes more sense to just kind of especially for something that's supposed to be precise like this uh, to just kind of go in there and kind of do it yourself uh, 
you know, as long as your geometry is not too dense, the, 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 the process of just kind of aligning all your vertices is not that painful. Okay. And again, we're having some. All right. And again, I just want to do a last kind of run through, make sure that everything's aligned. Okay. And another thing that I want to do, uh, again, at this point, after I align everything, I want to make sure that none of my vertices were actually snapped to the grid. Because that's something that could also happen. So again, you want to make sure that you don't do that as soon as it happens, otherwise, it, you know, it could be trouble. So I went in there and I aligned my, my vertices to, you know, zero here. And let's try and mirror this out again. See what happens. All right, and again, it. Uh, it seems to be like we're having the same problem, but again, let's just go and okay. We're now undid everything. It kind of undid my delete history, but it's not really a big deal right now. Uh, you know what? Actually, just to make sure that all I have to deal with is the mirror. Make, uh, make sure that I delete the history. Okay. And again, I'm gonna apply it one more time. And I'm just gonna play gonna play around with my threshold to see if it fixes this problem. If not, I gotta go back and see what is that is causing this. All right, and that's a little bit too much. So I'm going to go down. All right, and again by just lowering the threshold by 0.05, it is now mirrored correctly. Okay. <coughs> so again, the process is. Uh, Making sure that one, your um, your freeze transform the tra transformation. Um, so make sure it's freeze transform. So everything here is at zeros, and scale up one. That's correct. Uh, again, the idea is that if for some reason you need to move your geometry or whatever, even if you rotate it. All right. If I need to put it back to where it's supposed to go, all I gotta do is go in here and type zeros. And it's at perfect where it needs to fit. All right. Uh, second thing, uh, again, delete the history so you're not dealing with anything all that you don't need. All right. And again, sometimes just uh, it's good for your geometry to not kind of depend on any of that stuff anyway. So again, if you already done with the model, get rid of the history and just have whatever it is that you need right there. Um, <coughs> third step, again, um, go in here, make sure that. Uh, especially if it, uh, uh, you know, make sure that everything is aligned at, you know, at zero. And when you mirror it, then what you got to make sure of is that your threshold is not too high. Otherwise, it could distort your geometry a little bit too much. Okay. So the last thing you want to do, again, when you mirror things is to go in there and kind of uh, fix that stuff manually. Because it is going to change what you had there originally. Um, okay, and essentially to finish the car, all you got to do is kind of the same procedure with uh, every piece that has a similar as uh, aspect, such as this one. You know, this one is another one that you would mirror the geometry. Uh, and this piece is right here, and this one, this one. But what about pieces that are not connected, such as the door, all right? <coughs> and again, it helps that we actually created everything with splines and everything kind of has a pivot point at zero 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 so you know as long as it hasn't moved because again sometimes we have to kind of move the geometry around to uh, make things uh, fit and again I'm going to my top viewport to make sure that it's where it's supposed to be and it is all right then all you gotta do <coughs> it's a duplicate special to kind of mirror it on the other side all right and this is how you do it. You select the geometry, you go to edit, you go to duplicate special, all right? And you want to click on the options. You don't want to click it as is because you want to make you want to uh, you know uh, know what it is that it's doing. 
you know, uh, you want to do an instance because again, if you need to go back in here and do any changes to this geometry, it'll actually do them on the other side as well. All right. Uh, all right. And then the other thing that you gotta do again is make sure that you are aware to what axis it needs to be copied. Uh, it's gonna be transferring over. So just like this piece of geometry, this one's actually needs to be transferred over on the x-axis and because it's the opposite side is the negative one. So <coughs> I don't want to mess with the translate and rotate. I actually want to uh, uh, change the scale. By default everything is at 1, 1, 1. If I make the, the uh, scale at negative 1, um, how do I explain this? Okay. At one, by having the axis here, it you know it's a this is a scale one on the x-axis. If I change this to a negative one on the x-axis, it actually gonna flip it. And again, allow me to demonstrate. So notice that by just doing an, a negative one on the x-axis, it just kind of flipped it on the other side. All right. So I need to make a duplicate special that's just instance on the negative axis for it to, to fit on the right position. So that's basically what I'm going to do here. I'm, I'm going to add a negative one on the scale X. I only need one copy and then I just apply. Alright? And again, it works perfectly because my axis was right here at zero, zero, zero. Okay? And I can do uh, the same thing with the pieces of geometry because again they were extracted right out of this so they share the same pivot so if I want to make a copy of this handle I mean an instance of it so it fits right here perfectly where this hole is I just need to apply that again alright and any piece that you know like this one again this one is already uh, again, it was drawn as blind, so the pivot is was uh, at zero, zero, zero. I can go in here, make sure that it's actually at zero, zero, zero. It looks like it is. If for some reason it is, it isn't. Uh, you know, um, for uh, my laptop, I'm doing function uh, insert. If you're using a Mac, it's the home key to move around your pivot, and then you just want to make sure that it snap to the grid at zero, zero, zero. So again, if it wasn't here, I would just kind of do that and just snap it to the center right here. I would get out of the uh, edit pivot function here. All right. Want to make sure that it's not snapping anymore. And then I would just, same thing, uh, do an instance that's uh, uh, scaled or negative one in the x axis and then apply and it gives me an exact piece that's mirrored on the other side alright uh, but again one of the things that you gotta keep in mind is that this is not gonna work for everything uh, I mean you gotta make sure that you're mirroring on the right axis okay um, I believe let's see this one's on the X let me try mirroring this one and again <coughs> if I wanted to mirror this stuff right here I would select it and I'll make sure that everything's sharing the same pivot at zero 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 but I know for a fact that the tire is not alright so again I want to make sure that I snap that into doesn't necessarily have to be at the center but it has to go along that zero uh, you know axis line so again function uh, just to move my pivot around I want to make sure that I'm snapping to the grid now it's along this zero line get out of this turn off my snap alright and it looks like it's on the x-axis so if I wanted to mirror that tire on the other side again I apply that but it didn't. It looks like it was the x-axis, but I believe for this one is the y. So again, I'm going to select it. I'm going to change 
the negative x uh, scale to the negative y right here and I apply that and now I have that on the other side so the other aspect of it is just making sure that you know um, you know what's the correct axis to mirror uh, from all right and uh, once you uh, apply that to the car and as long as you have uh, you know depth and detail <coughs> you can get to this point all right all right and that concludes the demonstration